but now we're going to sort of pivot to vulnerability management. And this is a process of how do we identify which systems are vulnerable, i.e. which systems need to be patched. So the vulnerability management process is essentially accounting for what types of users, how are they trained, what software systems, you know, how is everything set up, what vulnerabilities do we inherently have in the organization. We want to monitor our assets and identify known vulnerabilities. And that's key. That's a key term there, known vulnerabilities. So when there is a vulnerability identified on Patch Tuesday and we get notification on Tuesday from Microsoft, you know, remember patch Tuesday from Microsoft, they say, hey, this version of Windows has these vulnerabilities. Well, if we didn't have a robust configuration management process, like a lot of organizations don't, unfortunately, their only way to do this asset discovery and accounting uh, for that vulnerability is to do a vulnerability assessment that requires or consists of a few different methods to get this information, which we'll cover in a little bit, but essentially, they go through the process to validate, hey, does this vulnerability exist on our network, yes or no? If it does, how can it be attacked? Is it, what criticality is it? And once all of those things are identified, we can go through the process of patching that vulnerability. So we've talked about vulnerabilities being out there in the wild in these disclosures. So let's dive a little bit into some of the common terminologies and sources of these vulnerabilities. So vulnerabilities are identified in CVEs or common vulnerabilities and exposures. Essentially, this is a system and it's a reference method, a naming convention, if you will, for us to look up publicly known information about security vulnerabilities and exposures. So again, we're really harping on the publicly known. Does that mean that there are unknown vulnerabilities that exist? Absolutely. There are unknown vulnerabilities that really nobody knows about and those are called zero days. Essentially meaning it's been zero days since anybody knew about them. Nobody knows about them, they don't exist. Or O days, you might hear it referred to. So a zero day is an exploit for a vulnerability that nobody knows about. So those are very, very scary and keep a lot of people up at night because there's not much we can do to account for zero days and these unknown uh, vulnerabilities. We just have to do our best defense in depth monitoring our systems, assets, configuration, having good detection uh, processes, have good countermeasures deployed. We've got to be operating essentially on all cylinders. And this goes back to something we said earlier in the course. At the end of the day, security, the defenders, we have to be successful 100% of the time because an adversary only needs to be successful once. That is to say, they can try to bang on our walls. They can try to you know, rip the bricks out. They can try to trick our users. Whatever they need to do, they can keep trying and trying and trying until they are successful. And we've got to stop them every single time they try to do that. And it makes it all that harder when the reality is there are exploits and vulnerabilities that we do not know about. The industry, nobody knows about it. So those keep up a lot of people up at night, um, but we've got to do our best to account for that through all the means that I mentioned. So let's talk a little bit more about CVEs, the known vulnerabilities that exist. Um, CVEs have a naming schema. So it starts with the CVE prefix with a hyphen followed by the year that the vulnerability was released, followed with a sequential number up to 13 arbitrary digits. Sometimes it appears that they're in a sequence order so the first vulnerability of 2019 might be 0001 and so on and so forth. So we can see here that there is a vulnerability in the year 2019 and it might be the 708th vulnerability disclosed to date. So by searching that online, we can go find um, the vulnerability or references to it. But the best thing to go is right to the source. So cve.mitre.org is the organization that manages the CVE database. This is where we would go look up CVEs to read about the associated vulnerable information. It would identify the software, the versions, how the vulnerability is exploited, what type of attack vectors are used, and the associated risk of that. Along with a CVE, we also have the CVSS, which is the Common Vulnerability Scoring System. So no two vulnerabilities are the same for the most part. 
Um, there are similar vulnerabilities, but most vulnerabilities are targeted to a specific application and a version. There is a lot of the same methods, there's lots of the same impact of these vulnerabilities, but we needed an additional scoring system to help us understand the criticality of these vulnerabilities as they relate to our assets. So the Common Vulnerability Scoring System, or CVSS, provides a way to capture the principal characteristics of that vulnerability, and it helps us produce a score which reflects its severity. We get the CVSS scores from the National Vulnerability Database. This is different than the CVE database. So the challenge here is, is that we have the MITRE CVE database, and then we have the National Vulnerability Database, which provides the CVSS base score. So when you have a CVE string, a name, you can take that from the MITRE database and you can go to NVD and you can query based on that CVE to identify and get insight on the relative CVSS scoring, which again, allows us to understand how critical this vulnerability is. And it helps determine things such as this vulnerable can be remotely exploited and those are the most concerning ones because if it can be remotely exploited that means if this machine is connected to a network or the internet any other device that can physically or logically reach out and touch that device can exploit it right so that would make any remote code execution vulnerability pretty critical depending on the sophistication of the adversary that needs to compromise it the CVSS base score takes into account for the likelihood or the complexity of an adversary to conduct this attack, and it even accounts for the exposure of a valid exploit. So an exploit is the code that takes advantage of a vulnerability. So if the CVSS score says this is a remote code execution vulnerability, means it can be exploited remotely, and an exploit exists, it's essentially saying there is a tool on the internet somewhere that people can use to attack this system if you have it vulnerable. So when you internalize that information and look at your organization, it should be very, very clear how risky it is to leave that system in an unpatched state. Because essentially, the CVE and CVSS scoring is saying that machine is vulnerable, a user or some other person that is on your local network or on the internet that can reach that device can exploit it remotely and the code exists for them to be able to do it. That is very, very concerning and we need to make sure that we take that into consideration when we do our criticality scoring and begin to patch those systems.